Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. Welcome back. Back on Tuesday, we got an exotic quest for a new sidearm added. I got it immediately. I've been working with it. I feel like I can review it. The quest is very simple. You do a sundial run, you go to Twilight Gap. It's very straightforward, so there's my video on that. Some are kind of upset on how short the quest was, but I didn't mind it at all. Because at least it didn't have you do something like go to Tangled Shore, find the specific captain, it's in a lost sector, it's only there on a full lunar eclipse, things like that. This was straight to the point, and you know what? The final part of the quest was in-game lore, not behind a dead ghost, not behind Grimoire, it was in the game and I'm okay with that. Once completed, you get the Solar Energy Exotic 300 RPM Sidearm, Devil's Ruin. It's a very unique weapon, it has a lot of utility. It can be used a couple of different ways for various tasks. It can be used in the Crucible, in PvE, and remember a couple things about sidearms. On 9-12-19, sidearms got a PvE damage increase to minor and major combatants by 16%. Very good for the PvE side, and on 12-10-19, all sidearms got increased target acquisition across the board. Extremely good for the Crucible, and of course that translates and carries over into PvE. I do have some tips on usage in the Crucible in this review. There's also some information about its charge time T TK final number, what it's actually doing because it deals damage very oddly. For its base stats, it has a range of 64, stability of 68, handling of 56, reload of 24, aim assist of 56, and a recoil direction stat of 100. It's very vertical. It has a locked in 1.2 times zoom, very clean, very open, easy to track with. For its perks, it has a combat grip to greatly increase recoil, and that's where we get that 100 recoil direction. It has extended barrel. It also has projection fuse. This is a battery. That's because its second fire mode has a charge time of 1000, and later on that's going to make sense that this mode actually hits further at extended ranges, because I believe that that's when this perk kicks in for the battery, and we'll get into that again in a moment. Its intrinsic perk is close the gap. Variable trigger. Press and release to fire individual shots. Hold to charge a high-powered staggering laser. Strong against unstoppable champions. And this adds to our champion exotic list. We have Devil's Ruin for Unstoppable Champions, Ariana's Val for Shield Piercing Barrier Champions, Divinity for Disruption, and that's strong against Overload Champions. Its secondary exotic perk is Pyrogenesis. Fully charging the laser refills the magazine from reserves. On a basic level, some players don't like the fact that there's a small delay when firing this sidearm. Devil's Ruin is unique that the bullet fires on trigger release, not on trigger pull. That's the delay that you're feeling. This acts similar to the Plasma Pistol from Halo. And just like the Plasma Pistol from Halo, Devil's Ruin can be charged, and it shoots a laser like a trace rifle. The charge time is 1000 or 1 second for it to charge and then shoot. The same as the exotic 1000 Voices. That also has a 1000 charge time, and I would show you the charge time side by side with 1000 Voices and Devil's Ruin if I had one. But moving on, the beam is that of a trace rifle, and we know that because of how it penetrates certain abilities. On a blocking arc strider and guard, a fusion rifle that shoots projectiles gets deflected and ultimately can down you. It can be thrown back, resulting in the possibility of death. The beam from Devil's Ruin doesn't care about blocking in the guard. It goes right through it. It can't critical, but you wouldn't expect it to, and this goes through it just like a cold heart would or any other trace rifle. So it does appear to be a pocket trace rifle, and sure, it has a charge time like a fusion, but then again, linear fusions have a charge time as well, and I don't think that you would call this a pocket linear fusion. Moving on into its damage profile for PvE, and as we go on, remember this is a primary weapon that accepts primary ammo. Now, even though it does take up an exotic slot, it can still be surrounded by a lethal kinetic and power weapon. Maybe Mountaintop or a Firing Line Tranquility. Maybe another primary like a Vorpal Weapon Scout or AR. You can pair that with a Spike Grenade Launcher Heavy like Swarm of the Raven, or possibly a Firing Line Linear Fusion. Its primary fire mode, the sidearm, the damage output is average. It's not elite, but then again, it's not a liability. It does great against low tier adds, and you do want to use it in sidearm form against those enemies to conserve ammo. Any red bar, any rushing adds, they're going to be perfect for sidearm mode. It did get that PvE buff, the target acquisition buff, it does well. For majors and shields, that's where the charge part of the weapon comes in. You hold down the trigger, it releases the charge, and all 15 rounds come out. This is also where Pyrogenesis can come in, fully charging the laser, refills the magazine from reserve. So, you can shoot the adds, the sidearm form, the magazine can get all the way down to even one, charge it up, throws reserves into your magazine, maxing out at 15 rounds, and then it shoots the beam. Then it does a reload after the mag is spent. Now when in charge form, the magazine comes out as the beam very fast and the shots hit harder. When in charge form, each bullet does 22.8% more damage, and we can round that to 23% more damage. It also extends its effective range. The
The beam is what you want to use on shields and yellow bars, and again, for a primary weapon, this is above average damage. Especially coming from a sidearm, quick and easy chunk damage, again, paired with a mountaintop, horrible kinetic, spike grenade launcher, you can throw this into your damage rotation. It's obviously best for unstoppable champions, you stop them right in their tracks for you and your team, and this does separate you from the artifact, because it's locked in on the weapon, that's always a good thing. The bottom line, as a primary weapon, you can do a lot with it. Is it absolutely in-game? No. But then again, situations arise, like Zero Hour came out and all of a sudden Arbalist was just a good weapon after that, even though it's been a good weapon the entire time. Devil's Ruin's capabilities aren't limited though, and I think that the PvE sidearm buff has a lot to do with that. The main thing is to use the charge on majors and bosses, yellow bars and shields, and the sidearm on the low tier adds. It does just fine. Onto the Crucible, there's gonna be a lot to cover here, and I think Bungie did a really good job with this because from what I've seen, it's kind of a 50-50 split. Some love it, some hate it, and I'm one of the ones that absolutely loves it, and I'm gonna walk through why, and I do have some reminders and tips to do better with it. First things first, the times to kill. It does 51 to the head, 35 to the body in sidearm form, and that's a four headshot. That's gonna result in a .6 TTK. Now the body shot TTK is six bullets. Those are gonna be to the body for a flat one second time to kill. So on the screen, we have a four shot that's all critical, .6, a five shot, .8, and a six shot, one second. Those are important numbers, we're gonna bring those back up. Now the effective range in sidearm mode is right at 16 meters, and at 16 meters you do max damage 51, as you go further back you start having fall off. So 16 meters and in is where it feels the most sticky. Past that, you can still land shots though because of that accuracy buff they got. It still feels somewhat sticky past its effective range. Now when you charge it and hold down the trigger, there are a couple things going on. Its effective range is up to 19 and a half meters with the beam. It does 36 to the head, 26 to the body. You can go past that, as long as you keep the beam on your target up to 25, almost 30 meters. And again, notice that the charge mode hits for more damage and it hits at an extended range than the sidearm mode. And again, I do believe that this is where the battery projection fuse comes into play. This makes sense to me. So for the charge time to kill, first thing, the one second from the charge time goes into the TTK, the time to kill. That's always going to be there, but the actual beam on target TTK is a six bullet kill. It could be four headshots and two body for 196, it could be all headshots shots or five headshots at a body, basically six bullets of the 15. The six bullet kill is 0.33 seconds, and a shout out to Mercury. He's from the Massive Breakdown, there's a link in the description to his Twitter, give him a follow, listen to the podcast. He's done a lot of work over the years as far as Destiny TTK. I came to him and said, hey, I got two numbers, because you have to consider that there is a charge time, and the initial shot comes out kind of weird. I had 0.3 seconds, and a second number of 0.36. He got something closer to 0.3, but he ended up looking at it and found out that when you shoot the constant beam, the trace rifle shot. It actually registers a shot every other frame. Long story short, it shoots a constant beam, but registers every other frame, and that's why my numbers were 0.3 and 0.36. He found the actual number is 0.33, and that made sense to me. It's smack dab right in the middle of my numbers, and it's taking into account missing frames. That's a bit of nerd talk. The body TTK is 0.47 seconds. That's taking into account what we just went over. That's eight body shots. So on the screen, we have the full time to kill charge for all optimal and body TTK. 1.33 seconds optimally, 1.47 seconds to the body. And if you take the charge time out of the equation, it's 0.33 and 0.47. So it's extremely fast, extremely lethal. I've seen some players say, why would you do that? It has a long charge time. Personally, I wouldn't worry about the charge time. A charge time has never stopped anyone. It's never stopped air until the Merciless has a 900 millisecond charge time. And I had my best statistical destiny game ever, 47 and 0 with Merciless on a 47 streak. And with the charging, some of said, an air until can do that, or it can do it at a longer distance. Well, an air until can't do this. It's that simple, and there are some things to really consider with Devil's Ruin, some things to remember. If you strictly use the charge shot, you're gonna get yourself into trouble. This is a sidearm first, and when you get in an engagement, it should be sidearm first. The charge shot is opportunistic. It's about positioning, just like a fusion rifle. Let's go back to the TTK values, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, one second in sidearm form. And I bring this back up because literally all of the sidearm TTKs are faster than the charge shot. So in an engagement, in a true 1v1, there's gonna be a time for that charge shot. 
but you have to anticipate it. And the goal here is a genuine attempt to help so you can do better with it and see the numbers. Now, if you do pre-charge properly, maybe from the air, maybe rounding a corner, that's where that 0.33 comes in. And it does happen. It can happen a lot if you move well with it, landing all your criticals, or even landing the 196 that's four crits and two body. And I think of it as the exotic perk, close the gap. If someone's closing the gap on you in a straight line, rep them down with a charge. And the same goes for you. If you're shooting a charge shot or you're chasing them down and they're backpedaling, it's effective ranges longer in charged form, so you're the one closing the gap. It's a somewhat tricky exotic that you have to be smart with, and in the background here I have a ghost metal, and I sidearm enemies and I use the charge. And hopefully you can see that the charge shot when I shoot it is more so reserved for when I have the upper hand, otherwise I need to duel in sidearm form. And I say remember sidearm first because the strength of a sidearm is your distance. Even though the charge shot hits longer, it's more so about your freedom of movement. That's what a fusion rifle can't do. Unlike closing the gap straight line with a shotgun or crouching with a firmly planted air until with a sidearm, you have your vertical space, you have your strafing, back and forward, engagement distance control. Truth is, most players can't wait to get in your face, and when they do that, the sidearm shine. If you make the play to shoot the charge shot, it's the worst kind of punishment. And most do play right into your hands. And when using a sidearm, for some of you, it might be a lost playstyle, maybe a new playstyle. So pay attention to what your opponent is doing. Most of the time, they're blind. And this gives you a chance to reflect on your own playstyle with a shotgun or rushing in general. Don't make blind runs. So I would say, and I would encourage, that you try to control your range using the sidearm and the close the closer that you get, the closer that they get, that's when the charge shot should happen. And another truth is that the sidearm is in a really, really good spot. You can do very well with them. But I do think that a lot of players forgot about how good that they could be since one hit kill weapons have been introduced, such as a shotgun or a fusion. It does mean that you need to play a little bit differently, and that translates to more tactful play instead of just straight line rushing someone. And I found one of the best things that you can do is that when someone is straight line rushing you with a shotgun or a shoulder charge, whatever it is, one of the best things that you can do with a charge shot is fire it from the hip. This gives you your field of view, your radar, it's easier to control when they're that close as you're backpedaling or moving in general, but the main thing is that you don't have the aim down sights movement penalty, therefore you can jump in the air, you can hit fire the beam, and continue using the strength of a sidearm. The background gameplay has been taken over the past three days and I got used to it. I take some long charge shots just to try to see what I can get away with, but I've come to the conclusion it's got to be sidearm first. The sidearm movement is your strength and the sidearm TTK is faster than the charge time TTK. There's a time for that charge. It's an opportunistic thing. So control your engagement, try not to get caught off guard, make them play your game, don't play their game, set yourself up for success. Now a couple more things, it's really good versus supers. You have to track well, but it can get the job done. If you have the time, you can shoot a couple regular sidearm shots first as they're closing in, then do the charge shot. It's actually one of the best things about it because you can run sniper sidearm. Both are able to take out supers, but that charge shot in CQC, landing heavy damage, is one of the best things about it. As you've been seeing from the gameplay, I do have a fast reload reload on Hunter, I have on the Trick Sleeves, and this exotic helps with Ready and Stow, it helps reload. When in low health, you get bonus damage, and let me tell you, getting the buffed beam melts. And when you get that big damage beam from the Trick Sleeves, that extends out your range, things like that. But the main thing about the Trick Sleeves, what I like is the reload, that's key, because on Warlock, you've been seeing some Warlock gameplay, I have on the Aspect. So otherwise, I do recommend a reload mod on your gauntlet, simply because of how much you could potentially use the charge shot. And if you miss, or you need to go to another enemy, you want that reload. In conclusion, I believe that this is a great weapon. It takes primary ammo, and in PvE, it's best used for unstoppable champions. The sidearm is great for low tier adds on higher tier enemies and ones that have shields. The charge shot shine. For PvP, it has a ton of adaptability. You can be in air with the sidearm, you can duel with it. If you're getting rushed or you're being aggressive yourself, you can shoot the charge shot. Obviously, it's best used when you're rounding a corner or when you know someone's rushing. That way, they get the full .33 right in their face. It's a very fun weapon and you can do well with it, and of course that's subjective, and I had a full tip section, and hopefully that can help some of you that have been struggling with it. I think it does have a catalyst coming, it could be really good depending on what it does. Now there is also a bug where you can refill the mag after the charge, but it's not really worth discussing. There are builds for the Trick Sleeves, Top Tree Warlocks, Titan Subclasses, there's a lot of different ways to use it, and the bottom line, everything considered, it's still probably a 50-50 split, and I think that's okay, I don't see any issue with that, and that's how I know they made a 
unique weapon and they've done a good job with it. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. And again, I do have new merchandise and it's been doing fairly well. It's doing so well that we're close to Teespring actually sponsoring a discount for them. You guys rock. Thank you for support. But I want to know what you think about Devil's Ruin. Time's going to tell on this exotic, but I think it's a good weapon. For you, is it something that's going to stick around or is it something that just didn't really feel right? Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.